Ann and Amy continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast. Sun and clouds, humid with a chance of an afternoon thunderstorm in a high of 83. Partly sunny right now, 72. Light rain in the Southland, Lansing right now seeing sprinkles and 70. Your next news update is at 9. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM 560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. The big guy, Mr. 10%, President Biden, wrote a letter to congressional Democrats today uh -oh. saying, quote, I want you to know that despite all the speculation in the press and elsewhere, I am firmly committed to staying in this race, to running this race to the end, and to beating Donald Trump. End quote. The end. I mean, there it is. play this cat and mouse game for the next 122 days. Is he going to stay? Is he going to go? Is Kamala Harris? I mean, it's such a drama play. Well, the problem with Kamala Harris is, of course, Kamala Harris. Um, remember, before you uh, start uh, uh, getting excited about a plan B, if you're a Democrat, I mean, this is Kamala Harris and you know, at her best, at her finest. You know, she's a great retail politician, just like they say Joe Biden is a great retail politician. Sure, she is. Here's uh, another uh, one of many instant classics from Kamala Harris. You remember when she tried to fill up an electric vehicle with a charger? Oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> but that was one. It's a bad episode. Uh, oh, no nice. Indicate, right? Sorry about that. Yeah, d I it's plugged in, so is it plugged into just the normal electric yeah. socket, right? Yeah, uh, yes. Normally it's a 240 volt, but you can go ahead and plug in and uh, okay. that's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There we are. That's it. And there's no sound or fume. There, there is nothing. Yeah. Yes. Electricity yes. doesn't have fume. All of us are used to, Every morning to we... filling our tanks. We, we mm -hmm. usually yeah. can smell it and, and you can hear it. You can hear the guzzling sound. Right. None of that. None of so that. So how do I know it's actually working? It oh. is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so typically, once you uh, uh, wave the card, it's, it's actually charging. So that's, but how would uh, I know that? Tell uh, me how so I would the, know that. So typically, uh, excuse me. Yeah. So typically, you come in here, uh, wave this card, yeah. and then uh, what it would do is it would authenticate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Those, those I had to show her how she it. knows it's uh, charging. Yeah. Um, just stand, stand there and stare at it for hours. She had the same uh, conversation at Verizon. How do I know this phone is charging? Um, and no fumes. When I plug in my phone, there's no fumes Woo! to it. So that's that's your plan B. Mm -hmm. uh, you may, may want to, Democrats may want to see if there is a morning after pill politically, if this is your plan B. For uh, more on this, please be joined by Matt Wolfson, investigative journalist. He writes at oppo-research.com. Sounds very dark and shifty. oppo-research.com. Matt Wolfson, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hi, Dan. Hi, Amy. It's great to be here. So um, a Biden replacement, we've been essentially suggesting all morning that, you know, they're trying to gently ease Joe Biden down the stairs and to the exit, but... As uh, you heard from his letter today to congressional Democrats, no dice. Yeah, I mean, I think he's in. I, I, I was talking to somebody. Uh, uh, I'm an ex-leftist. I was talking to a friend of mine on the left yesterday who's still on that side. And I said, look, I disagree with Biden about everything except maybe one policy. I think he's one of the worst presidents in our history. And yet, in the face of this, I find myself in the face of what I think is going on, oddly rooting for him, because this is such a top-down corporate Democrat insider play. I mean, it, it it's actually viscerally offensive. I'm, I'm sort of surprised. I mean, because Biden is the last person in the world I would ever feel any sympathy for. And yet, in the face of what I think is happening, which is that insider Washington 
all of these sort of internal operatives who never leave, have decided against, by the way, what polling in the swing states say, they've decided that Biden, you know, isn't useful to them anymore. And so they're booting him out. And they're doing it in, in, you know, really typically corrupt ways. Insider leaks. I mean, certain operatives on his team that I think are likely playing both sides. Of course. Um, so it's, it's a very strange situation. But what role is President or former President Obama playing in this, do you think? Well, I, what's interesting is you can't know, but you can speculate. And if you look at past, you know, sort of weird plays in Washington from sort of the lead up to the Iraq war to Russiagate to, to this, what they all sort of share in common is that people start noticing sort of like dissident journalists who won't take the party line in D.C. start noticing weird facts on the side. And then they're sort of like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And, and that's sort of what I'm finding, you know, in this case. So first of all, for example, you know, the day of the debate, literally the day of the debate, Axios, the website, the news website, happened to come out with a piece explaining why Michelle Obama wasn't campaigning for Biden. I hadn't noticed that, but I thought, okay. And the two reasons were that she was mad at the way that the family had treated Hunter's ex, Hunter Biden's ex, and they were friends, uh, and that she hated politics. And both of those seemed a little weird to me because, I mean, Michelle Obama, whatever you think of her, you know, famously values family cohesion, so why would she blame the Bidens for their personal thing? You know, and also she coined the most famous line of recent election cycles. When they go low, we go high. And that was my first thought, that these were weird explanations. My second was, why is it coming out the day of the debate? I mean, it's just weird timing. Well, that night he bombs, Biden bombs. You know, a day later, Obama, you know, releases a statement saying, you know, we all have bad debates. What matters is the last four years. But it's kind of vague. He doesn't, you know, outright reendorse Biden, Sam, with him 100 percent till the end. Um, that happens uh, 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 the day of. Um, two days later, the Washington or four days later, the Washington Post comes out with a piece saying, you know, privately, Obama is saying that Biden is in a much worse place. If you take sort of that succession of events, that's on one side, right? Then there's a whole sort of other quiet set of reports the last year that makes them make more sense. One of them is that President Obama has been living in Washington, D.C. since he got out of the White House. No president has done that in our history since Woodrow Wilson, who had a massive stroke and couldn't be moved in 1921. This is weird. Like, when Obama originally got out of the White House, he said, that's because our youngest daughter wants to finish high school here. And everybody was like, OK, but she's way out of high school now. And they're right. still there. And the reporter, David Samuels, who's one of these sort of dissident liberals who's pretty mad at the Democratic establishment, you know, he said the D.C. reporters, you know, more than one have told him that a big story reporters won't cover is who's going to Obama's mansion in Colorado because Secret Service cards are there often, not the president's, but White House official Secret Service cards, White House aides. If you look at actually, you know, the people in the Biden White House, it is Obama's third term. Like, that's not an exaggeration. Susan Rice, Neera Tandon, Samantha Power, John Kerry, Anthony Blinken, Robert Malley, Wendy Sherman, John, you know, I'm just naming names, right. but it's, you know, it's 10, yep. 12 people. So if you combine the fact that Obama's living in Washington in contact with these people, that, you know, he makes this weird statement saying that his wife, you know, this is the reason she didn't campaign for Biden, you know, the day of the debate, you know, you start to kind of muddy up the picture where it looks like, well, I mean, people like Roger Stone have been saying that, that, that Michelle may be the nominee, that they may slate her in. No. And if that mm-hmm. were a play that they were considering, mm-hmm. it would make sense to say, well, we want to keep her away from Biden so she's not tarred by association. But, oh, also, on the eve of this debate, we want to explain why we're doing that. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I, I, I don't think that's the play. I mean, but it seems to me just to you know play this out a bit that the only way to get him out and to coalesce the entire party around him, and by that I mean the entire party, so I mean the billionaires in Silicon Valley and, and the D.C. press corps and the academics and 
you know, all the constituencies of the Democrat Socialist Revolutionary Party. Um, the only way would be for Michelle Obama to almost make an announcement that I'll I'll run if Joe walks. So, mm. I mean, at, at some point, the, the, what I don't know what their out the window strategy is if he won't take the stairs. But but it seems to me that they're going to have to make a decision in terms of whether or not they actually want to pursue the out the window strategy. The other thing about Obama being the puppet master, which I have some suspicion about, even though I agree that this is his third term or their third term, whatever. Like three miles from um, the White the, House. The, 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 the problem I have is um, they can't be that close and not know what condition Biden was in. And they decided to roll. So if, if that's true, they decided to roll the dice and it came up snake eyes. And so now they're stuck. Well, I actually so my read is a little bit different. Okay. I think he did know. And I think there's no way he couldn't. Exactly. And I think that this may have been a kind of just implicit sort of play to set Biden up for a very public fall because he wouldn't step aside anyway. And, and the evidence I have or the indication is that probably the main person responsible for you know setting up this debate, making it unprecedentedly in June rather than September, uh, was Anita Dunn. And Anita Dunn is a 30-year Washington player, very close to the Obamas. Hmm. You know, one of the rare sort of aides to be in both the Obama-Biden White House. Her husband is Obama's personal lawyer, Bob Bauer. She was in charge of all of this sort of debate prep, all of the planning. She's getting like a small amount of blame, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, from, from the media. But the media is sort of being quiet. People close to Biden are calling her a liar, a grifter, saying this is all her fault. Interesting. And if you actually look, it, it Dunn's past. She's an incredibly influential consultant in D.C. She has been for 30 years, but she has sort of interests everywhere. And this is an Illinois connection I, I thought you might find interesting. She's very good at playing both sides of any sort of play. A year ago, it came out that she was both giving Mike Madigan, you know, the former speaker, advice on combating, you know, all of the sexual assault sort of sexual misconduct trials that were swirling around him. And she made $200,000 doing that. At the same time, her firm was representing one of the women suing <laughs> Madigan's office for exactly that thing. Yeah, and right. they didn't yeah. disclose the conflict of interest. It only came out in a trial on wiretaps. And the woman who they were representing said she felt absolutely betrayed. She couldn't believe they were playing. It, it seemed like they were playing both sides. So, I mean, Dunn has a history of doing this. So in a very loose play, and I'm not saying this is coordinated. I mean, I just think it's, you know, there's a general understanding of what we all need to do because Joe isn't up to it anymore, but he's dug in his heels. That's you know, interesting. I think she would be a natural point person to set up a debate that, you know, was early enough that they could get him out. They might know he might not show his best side. Not a conspiracy at all, just sort of gaming the system a very little bit. That's really interesting. I mean, I, that's plausible. I, I got to say that's plausible. It's a, it's a different way to look at it, but it's certainly plausible. And, and so then if that is what was afoot, then they just settle on uh, running the, uh, trying to run the gauntlet with Kamala. And, uh, and if she comes up short, then, then we have, you know, a clean slate in 28. Is that the philosophy? You know, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm watching reruns of the show Veep with Julie Louise Dreyfus and Kamala. I mean, it's just uncanny how similar she is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, You're so I, right. I, I am not an expert at Democrat. I mean, she's not. A, it's what you said before this segment. She's not a good choice. I'm not an expert at Democrat insider politics, but in terms of the actual politicking, you know, people are talking about open conventions. You know, James Clyburn said that, you know, they should be, or somebody said that they should be auditioning in front of Oprah. You know, I mean, people are already <laughs> floating. No, I mean, quite publicly, yeah. either in to the press or, or publicly, they're floating scenarios, um, you know, where, where someone other than Kamala could, could get the nomination, whether, whether Gavin Newsom, whether Michelle whether the uh, Whitmer, you know, gosh help us, Pritzker, oh gosh. Yeah. 
I mean, it's it's interesting. I you know, I, I think that there may be something, you know, the open process. Uh, Tom Friedman called for that too, other people have. You know, the the idea that, well, if if you skip over Kamala, she'll be upset and so then you know, black Americans will be upset and so forth. Mm-hmm. And that's a problem. But but is it really maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, because at the end of the day, it's a binary choice. And so even if your feelings are a little bit hurt, we have bigger fish to fry. And so you make the case, as they've been making, end of times if Trump is reelected. So it's got to be all hands on deck for who's ever up next. That's that's what I think they're thinking. And I think they're also thinking and I mean, I've known people like this. It's very like they don't care what on the ground voters think. They think that right. another 90-minute debate where it's not Biden, someone who can really put cogent sentences together, they think that that will swing the race. Like, that is actually what I think they think. Because all of these people, they don't see democracy as like, or, you know, government as listening to people. They see it as, you know, throwing a bunch of media sound bites. That's their job. They live in D.C. You know, so I think they're looking for a second debate with somebody who will you know, look very impressive, have those sound bites, and they think that will bring voters. Now, voters in swing states say they still prefer Biden over literally any other Democratic candidate. But, you know, they, the Democratic apparatus, they don't listen to that. They don't care. That's a good point. Matt Wolfson, investigative journalist. He writes at oppo-research.com. Matt, thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. This is Chicago's Morning Answer. Your show keeps me alive during the week. There's nobody I'd rather listen to between 5 and 9 in the morning than you guys. On AM 560.